The results are in and they are not playing by the rules. These are 15 athletes who got caught cheating on live TV. But first, be sure you don't get caught missing out on any video goodness. Take a second to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Some athletes are held up as beacons of good sportsmanship and use sports to teach us all important lessons about our values. Others lie, cheat, and steal in order to win at all costs. Take a guess at which one is more fun to watch. Ric Flair was one of the greatest world champions because he was the dirtiest player in the game. And like he said, it's not cheating unless you get caught. Well, these stars are the ones that got caught by the cameras. These are 15 athletes who got caught cheating on live TV. Former WBA welterweight champion Antonio Margarito was one of the hottest names in boxing and seemed destined to be an all-time great. He was putting together a string of classic matches and seemed to be pummeling opponents with his vicious fists. But that sky-high dream came crashing to the ground when his trainer Javier Capetillo was caught putting hard white plaster of Paris into his hand wraps before his match with Shane Mosley. Margarito and his trainer both had their boxing licenses revoked for a year. Will Smith is the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but there's another Will Smith in the celebrity stratosphere, and this one is a pitcher in Major League Baseball. He's known less for his Uncle Phil and more for being suspended for using pine tar. Pitchers sometimes use illegal sticky substances to get a better grip on the ball, so it can get better movement. And Smith had an obvious glaring smear on his arm when he entered the game. If you're going to cheat, at least try and hide it. He claimed it was sunscreen and resin that he was using to grip the ball when he warmed up and forgot to wipe it off. Uh, Will, that's still against the rules. Golf has some serious rules and traditions and a whole lot of old sticklers that will let you know if you break one of them. One of those rules is you play your ball where it lies. So when Patrick Reed found himself stuck in a sand trap, he shouldn't have been surprised that fellow golfer Brooks Kopka noticed him subtly clearing out the sand in the ball's way during his practice swings. Kopka said of the incident, I mean, I don't know what he was doing, building sandcastles in the sand, but you know where your club is. In a 1990 FIFA World Cup qualifying match between Chile and Brazil, up 1-0 with 20 minutes left, the Brazilian team was coasting to win when suddenly a flare erupted from the sand near the Chilean goalie, Roberto Rojas. It looked like he had been hit and had cuts up and down his arm. Chile left the field in protest and it seemed as though Brazil would be disqualified. But upon further inspection, the flare didn't come near Rojas at all and he had made the cuts on his arm himself. Brazil went on to win 2-0. Chile was banned from qualifying for the 1994 World Cup and Rojas was banned for life. At the 1984 Olympic Games in Los Angeles, Puerto Rican track and field star Madeline de Jesus was set to make waves as a long jumper and sprinter. But during the long jump competition, she pulled her hamstring and didn't think she would be able to suit up for her part in the 4x400 relay six days later. So she enlisted the help of her twin sister. That's right, twins. Madeline's sister, Margaret, was a runner as well but had not qualified for the Olympics and was there as a fan. The sisters agreed to swap and Margaret ran Madeline's portion of the relay in enough time for the team to finish eighth and for Puerto Rico to qualify for the track and field finals. But when the chief coach of Puerto Rican team learned of the ruse, he pulled his team out of the competition. Sammy Sosa was hitting dingers deep into the 90s and early 2000s until baseball got its underwear in a bunch over all of its players using steroids. A few of those hits were called into question though when in 2003 Sosa hit for a routine out at first. But on this hit, his bat shattered and inside the bat was cork. Yep, the old corking the bat trick. The umpires picked up the bat pieces, saw the cork and threw Sosa out of the game. He was then handed an eight-game suspension. Sosa claimed he used the corked bat to entertain the fans at batting practice and had accidentally grabbed it during the game. There's nothing worse than having a stick that is too curved. Evidently, the NHL thinks so too and believes players whose sticks don't meet the right measurements are cheaters. In Game 2 of the 1993 Stanley Cup Finals, the LA Kings' Marty McSorley was busted for having a stick with too much curve at the blade. 
The Montreal coach either had an eagle eye or was working with some inside information and asked the refs to check it out. They took out their trusty level and confirmed the coach's suspicions. Tony Romo is spicing up broadcasts these days as an analyst and may be better at that than he was as a quarterback. Calling out the plays before they happen on the field for the viewer at home is way more impressive than getting sacked almost every play. That's not to say he wasn't trying to win. Check out this sly cheat Tony tried to pull during a lull in the action when Tony pushes the ball forward ever so slightly for a better shot at a first down. Stick to the booth, Tony. The Little League World Series sports some serious talent that can go on to the majors. So it's no surprise that in 2001, when pitcher Danny Almonte was throwing Little League scorching 75 mile per hour fastballs past batters, scouts took notice. It all fell apart though when it was revealed that he was actually 14, two years older than the 12 year old age limit for the league. Here's a classic cheat. Mike Tyson was fresh out of prison on the comeback path, but his match with Evander Holyfield didn't go as planned with Holyfield winning in dominating fashion. So when the two met for a rematch seven months later, Iron Mike was not in a great mood to begin with. Early in the match, Tyson is headbutted by Holyfield and decides to get payback. But instead of headbutting him back, he chomps off a piece of his ear. The ref gives Tyson a warning and deducts two points, and the fight continues for a few minutes until Tyson gets hungry and bites down on Holyfield's ear again. Tyson's boxing license was revoked and he was fined $3 million. China's gymnastics team has been dogged by rumors of lying about the ages of its team members for years. The age minimum for the Olympics is 16, but there were reports of Chinese team members being as young as 14. An investigation in 2008 for the Beijing Olympics proved inconclusive, but there was enough evidence of cheating at the Sydney Olympics to force China to relinquish its bronze medal. The world of bicycle racing is a cheating goldmine. There's been doping scandal after doping scandal, followed by more doping scandals. Looking at you, Lance Armstrong and Floyd Landis. But this cheat might take the cycling cheat cake. Femke van den Dreischke didn't cheat by doping. Nope, she hit a motor in her bike. Remember, this is a bicycle race, not motocross. Van den Dreischke said that it wasn't her bike, it was a friend's that looked just like hers. Uh, that old excuse. Rather than face disciplinary action, the 19-year-old said she would retire. Former NFL pass rusher Greg Hardy is going for it in the MMA world, but he can't seem to get a hang of not breaking the rules. In an October 2019 UFC fight, Hardy took a hit off his inhaler between rounds, and that is completely illegal. The rules since pretty much the beginning of time has been only water between rounds unless you've received special approval. Hardy did not receive special approval. Oh, and in Hardy's first UFC fight, he was disqualified for an illegal knee to a downed opponent's head. Not cool. Rosie Ruiz finished the 1980 Boston Marathon in an almost record-setting 2 hours and 31 minutes. And she didn't even break a sweat. In fact, officials thought she was so put together after the grueling race that something seemed kind of fishy. Oh, and none of the other competitors remembered seeing her for the first 25 miles of the 26-mile slog. The secret to Ruiz's time was she took the subway. After starting the race, she hopped on the train and entered back into the race for the last mile. It's the same way she ran the New York City Marathon earlier in the year. At least she was consistent. Stealing signs in baseball goes back to the beginning of baseball. It's an expected part of the game. That's why teams change up their signs so often. But using technology to steal signs goes a little bit too far. At home games, on the run up to their 2017 World Series, the Houston Astros used a camera in their outfield to steal signs from opposing teams' catchers and let their batters know what pitches were coming by banging out codes on trash cans. This was a similar system the Yankees used in 2017 using cameras from the Yes Network to pick up signs. The Boston Red Sox were caught having their video replay coordinator steal signs and relay them to the dugout during their 2018 championship season as well. 